Hi, and welcome to Functional Justin episode 4, Scala 3 type classes. So, uh, Scala 3, at the time of recording this video, is going to be out in uh, a few days, maybe a week or two. Uh, we're actually using um, Milestone 3, so version 3.00 M3, uh, but I think the release candidate should be the next thing that we see. Um, so, lots of people use type classes in Scala 2, um, the CATS library, the Scala Z library, lots of functional programming people went crazy with type classes and to address that Scala 3 has made type classes a bit easier to work with so in this video we're going to dig into extension methods and uh, look at the implicit syntax again and uh, rebuild our Scala 2 version of numeric uh, using Scala 3 features alright so let's begin um, our starting point can be our uh, numeric code from last time which doesn't use any Scala 3 features, and then we can reimagine it using extension methods and the new implicit syntax. So the first thing we want, and we can just take it directly from the old code, is a trait which describes the uh, methods of the type class. So we've got add, we've got multiply, uh, these are abstract methods that just take two types of type T and return a type T, and then we have a derived method uh, which can square any type T and the user won't have to override this when they create their own implicit instance uh, because it's implemented in terms of these abstract ones so that's the numeric and the next thing we would need to do is create some instances of the, of the type class so the way we do that is similar but not identical so we can copy and paste the old version And um, oh, thank you, train. So we just want to change the syntax. We're going to use the given syntax. We no longer have to create an implicit value. And um, the syntax looks like this. So we don't need to name this. We can just leave it anonymous. And then we use the with keyword. And uh, that's what we need to implement an instance. So apart from that, everything's the same. We can still go ahead and implement the actual methods in the same way as last time. So the, the main change here with Scala 3 is the uh, different syntax. And um, we, the, they got rid of the implicit keyword. Or you can still use it, but it's deprecated. But now you can use different keywords to represent uh, different, different um, use cases for the implicit. So in this case, when you want to provide an implicit, you use the given keyword. And when you want to use an implicit, you use the using keyword. So let's just ignore long for this video, but we'll we'll use the, uh, the string instance as well because I think that's a fun one. Uh, even though it's not really practical, it's just um, a good example of how you can write an instance for any type T uh, for a particular type class, as long as you can implement the methods in a way that makes sense. So there we've just converted it to the new syntax and then we're good to go. So now we already have a type class, a uh, numeric, and we have two instances of the type class. Uh, when we want to actually use this thing, we're going to go and um, we need to summon the thing into existence. So we can use the summon method and we want to bring in an instance of, say, numeric string. And then we can call functions on it. And then let's just square a string like a b, and then uh, print the result. Um, let's just run that. So we go to compile it. Boom! There we go. So we we multiplied uh, the string a b with itself, and uh, that's what the pr cross product of a b looks like. So the next thing we need is a way to add our uh, type class functions as if they were methods on the original object. So if you remember back to the uh, last video, the third video, we uh, used an implicit class conversion. Um, let's take a look at that. Uh, so this implicit conversion has to be in scope and it gives us a way to automatically take any instance uh, that has a numeric type in scope and turn it into a numeric ops type which is essentially a new class that has these operations added onto it. 
So that's kind of a bit of boilerplate we don't really want to worry about. And that's where extension methods come in. So extension methods are new in Scala 3. And they give us a way to take some type and uh, add methods to it. So it doesn't matter uh, here in this example, uh, it doesn't matter if that type is something type that you don't control. You can always define extensions after the type is defined. So we're going to use that to add a couple of extension methods to our uh, numeric. So uh, let's do that. So what we want to do is use the extension keyword, and then you can create a single um, you can create a single uh, function like this. We're going to define the plus operator, and we're going to add it to some second thing called b, and then we're going to define it in terms of the um, in terms of add. So that means this is a derived extension method. So it means that instances of numeric don't have to define this; they'll just have it available. And then the next thing we can do is define the multiply operator. And that's just going to call the multiply function. All right, so what that gives us is anything that's in a numeric uh, can now use the um, multiply operator. So let's say we want to multiply two strings. We can take a string like ABCD and multiply it by EFGH. And then we can print the result. Now we wouldn't have been able to do this if it wasn't for extension methods because Scala had to realize that the multiplication operator was of type numeric and then it had to go and find the instance of it. Um, so I think that's pretty neat. It's a lot easier to write type classes and extend them than it was in, uh, in Scala 2. There's less boilerplate and the keywords and um, syntax is a lot more direct. So one other thing we might want to look at is the uh, square function. So let's say we wanted to square a number. So we should be able to do that, right? And we're going to print it. So you can see that we've got some we've got some red there. It's not happy. Um, that's because we can't directly access that because it's not an extension method. So we're going to just change that. We're going to turn square into an extension method. Um, we're going to say that it operates on a type on a type T and then we can just define it like that. And uh, we don't need it to have any arguments. All right, so now we can just call square on anything that's a numeric. Just going to compile and run. You can see that the square of 10 is 100. So we can tidy up the syntax a little. There's no need to repeat this extension keyword. We can, in fact, put all of these things in the same block. So we don't need uh, this one. We don't need this keyword. And, um, and then we can just take these and put them in this block. And that makes things a little simpler as well, again. So that's it. It's actually quite simple to build and use type classes using Scala 3 extension methods and the new implicit syntax. What we're going to do in the next video is the um, Scala 3 documentation actually has um, a little guide to implementing type classes. So we've got semi-groups, we've got monoids, we've got functors. And what we'll do is we'll just talk about functors and monads, and then we'll get to applicatives and we can see how we can use applicatives to add error handling to the um, evaluation, the uh, expression evaluator that we did in the second video. So a lot of things will come together and uh, should be pretty cool. So in the meantime, thanks for watching this video and uh, see you next time.